Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. After a baby formula shortage that swept the country tonight, the Department of Justice is investigating the Michigan plant at the center of the problem. Good evening, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Good to have you with us at 11. Abbott Labs plant in Sturgis was shut down for months last year after FDA, FDA inspectors found bacteria at the plant. There were also reports, you'll recall, of babies becoming sick drinking their formula. Well, after an extensive investigation, the feds could not link the bacteria at the plant to any illness. Mara McDonald live tonight. Mara, it appears the investigation is far from over. That's right, Kimberly. You know, the Abbott plant uh, at the center of all of this has been operating under a consent decree uh, with the Department of Justice since last May. Clearly now, the feds aren't done here. According to a report in the Wall Street Journal tonight, the Department of Justice has opened a criminal probe into the conduct and actions at the Sturgis, Michigan Abbott plant. That plant is a major producer of infant formula in the U.S. And when FDA inspectors went in there last year and found violations, the greatest one being the discovery of a potentially deadly bacteria, it set off a nationwide shortage of baby formula that had parents scrambling. It was so bad, the Biden administration lifted tariffs and other requirements to allow foreign produced formula to be flown into the U.S. An exhaustive FDA investigation could not conclusively link the bacteria at the plant to any babies who got sick. Abbott, under a consent degree with the DOJ, was allowed to resume operating in Sturgis last May. Back here live, how serious was that infant formula shortage? Once Abbott could finally get the Sturgis plant back up and running under that consent decree in May, it took until late October of last year for the supply to really catch up. We're live downtown tonight at the Federal Building. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, far from over, Mara, we appreciate it. Now a local four update. The man police have been seeking in the shooting death of a woman in Pittsfield Township has been found dead body of Michael Olinsky was found in Clare, Michigan. Police say evidence on the scene indicates he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Olinsky is suspected of shooting Andrea Grant, a resident of Plymouth. She was found Thursday inside an SUV riddled with bullet holes and parked in front of a fitness center in Pittsfield Township. There is no word yet on any connection that might have existed between the suspect and the victim. The suspected robber of a bank in Macomb County is in custody tonight after a dramatic chain of events in another state. Police say Jacob Edwards robbed the Huntington Bank in New Baltimore Tuesday afternoon. He was arrested today in Illinois. Police say he stole a truck in Indiana, which he then crashed and then ran away from uh, as deputies in Illinois responded to a call from residents claiming that Edwards was knocking on their door. When deputies responded, Edwards pointed a gun at a deputy and that deputy shot him. Uh, he's been taken to a hospital shooting being investigated now by Illinois State Police. A shattered fence in Lincoln Park is a grim reminder of a tragic moment that shattered a community. This is the scene where four young lives were lost in November when a teenager on a joy ride crashed an SUV. Sean Lay is there live where some are coming together to help that community heal. Sean. Good evening, Kimberly. Here's why this happened, as you say, in mid November. Five kids in that SUV rolling into this fence. Four did not survive. The homeowner here, she's been in and out of the hospital since then. She says when she sees the broken fence, it reminds her of the kids and she's just heartbroken. A couple of guys who work on fences, they come by every day. Today they said, we're going to fix this fence for the homeowner, for the community. Right, every day you drive by and you see this fence down like that, that's just a reminder of what happened. Jason Plesky and James Daniels drive by this shattered fence on Seacott in Lincoln Park every day. I drive my daughter to school that goes to school right here and I drive by it every day and every time I see it, just you know it's a memory that something tragic that happened here that should never happen. That memory, four young lives lost during a joyride here November 17th, killing an 18-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 14-year-old, and 8-year-old Darania Duncan. Jason works with James Daniels. He owns JD's Professional Carpentry. Seeing the shattered fence reminds them of the shattered families who also pass by this tragic reminder. But it ain't, it ain't going to, you know, be a constant reminder in their face, like For every sure. time they come out. Jason and James say... 
they're going to fix this fence. We're going to get back together for them, man, so, you know, they can start with the healing process, you know? I mean, a visual can bring something back to you, man, that, you know, you don't want to think about. Both men say no one will forget what happened here or the young lives lost here, but it's time to fix the fence and heal this heartbroken community. I, I just want to do it just because it's the right thing to do. Back here live, the right thing to do. James, Jason, they're going to get to work on this fence. They say about February 1st, and since they said in here in the community in Lincoln Park they were going to do this, other businesses around the area said, yeah, we're going to chip in some uh, cost, some materials, some manpower to get the fence back up. Again, a bad reminder here, but they're doing this for the homeowner. They're doing it for the community. Guys, back to you. Really, really kind gesture, like you said, to help the community heal. Sean, we appreciate your story tonight. The decision is in on that now fame, even more famous Van Gogh painting currently on display at the DIA. A federal judge just ruled the Detroit Institute of Arts does not have to hand over this, the novel reader, which is currently part of the big exhibition at the museum. The judge ruled that federal law dictates the painting is immune to seizure. As we've reported this week, a Brazilian art collector claims to have purchased the painting, but says it disappeared before he ever took custody of it. No word on what happens, though, now to the piece after the exhibit ends. That's this Sunday night, but we'll keep you posted. A Detroit firefighter is accused of selling drugs all across Macomb County. 49-year-old Gerald Trombley was arrested by Sterling Heights Police. He is yet to be arraigned. They say he sold narcotics and prescription pills in Roseville, Warren, and East Point. The 15-year veteran of the department lives in Warren, but police say Trombley peddled narcotics all over Macomb County in his spare time. Trombley is being charged in two separate courts, one in East Point, one in Warren. Uh, after the drubbing the Republican Party took in the Michigan midterms, the race to be the next state GOP chair is being closely watched. And now former President Trump is weighing in. Tonight he announced his support for former Attorney General candidate Matt DiPerno. DiPerno has remained insistent that the 2020 election was fraudulent, but you could say that of almost all of the other 10 candidates to lead the state GOP. The next chair will be chosen at the party's convention in Lansing next month. Okay, let's uh, get a first look at your forewarned forecast. Kim Adams uh, here with that and temperatures certainly changing from what we've seen <laughs> yeah. here lately. I know and we're still technically above normal for this time of year. It just feels a lot colder because yesterday we were in the upper 40s. Tonight we're in the 30s and we have had a little light snow in and around Metro Detroit. Now a couple of flurries, but otherwise it will be a dry night. When you start the day tomorrow, if you get up early enough, you might actually see the sunshine, but you've got to get up pretty early because uh, by about 9 or 10 o'clock, that sunshine is gone. We'll have cloudy skies. Temperatures in the afternoon are in the low to mid 30. So a little chilly tomorrow, dry tomorrow, but it does look like the second half of the weekend. We could see a little snow. I'll talk about that in the forecast. Some sunshine for Monday and Tuesday, and then maybe get your shovels ready for a storm coming in on Wednesday. With all the snow coming in over the next several days, you'll certainly want to download the forewarn weather app and that will keep you up to date on when the snow arrives in your neighborhood, how much it will be and all those great details. It's the interactive radar right in the palm of your hand. Go to your favorite app store and download the forewarn weather app.